Anyone familiar with my website will know that I reproduce a lot of vintage computer and test equipment boards, PCBs, that sort of thing. And about a year ago, a friend approached me and asked if I would have a look at reproducing a device called the OP80 tape reader. Now this is a vintage tape reader that was originally produced in the 70s. It's a simple manual device. You put the tape in one end and pull the tape through by hand and it allows you to load punch tape into pretty much any machine that's got a, um, a serial interface. I had a look at it and the PCB itself is very straightforward. Uh, this is the actual original device. And as you can see, simple PCB, just a row of chips along the middle, cup on the top connector, a few LEDs, some guide rails and an optical sensor. Now of course it's the optical sensor that is the main key to this device and these are long since uh, unavailable, you, you, you want to find them anywhere. Even if you find an OP80 you, uh, you may well find that the, um, the optics don't work anymore and you would really have a hard job finding one that would uh, act as a replacement. You can find second-hand units on eBay, but they are horrendously expensive. And as of making this video, I had a quick look, and there's one on there now for in excess of $500. Uh, you know, ridiculous price, very simple device. But the problem was, of course, uh, the optical sensor. So I, I had a look at it and had a, a think about it, and decided that just providing a bare PCB that was an exact reproduction of the original wouldn't really help anyone because they wouldn't be able to construct a working reader from it unless they happen to find one of these original uh, optical sensors which is probably fairly remote it's unlikely that you'd be able to find one so uh, after a lot of uh, head scratching and, and trying to figure out the best way to to move forward on this what i decided to do was to offer an entire kit and uh, that would include everything a, a new design of optical sensor the guide rails, the PCB, the case and all the components. Now one of the things that we discussed was while there are already reproductions of this on online you can get uh, reproduction OP80s. They're not really reproductions, they are similar size, relatively similar in their appearance but use a completely different arrangement for the optical sensor. But I wanted something that looked much more like the original and to that end uh, what I've done is, is, is recreate this as closely as I can and come up with this. So hopefully as you can see it is reasonably accurate in its appearance. It's obviously a lot newer so it's a bit shinier but fundamentally it looks um, pretty much as close to the original as you could get. Now one of the issues in creating this was of course the, uh, the sensor. So I had to design a, a sensor from scratch uh, so this is not a commercially available sensor, this is made simply to uh, act as a, a drop-in replacement for these kits. So the entire kit includes everything that you can see here, including the enclosure. And I'll give a, a quick demonstration of it. So essentially you, you hook it up using a header in the same way that you would the originals. I can provide these headers as well, although they're not included in the kit. Power it up and you can see that um, the LEDs come on. I'll feed a piece of tape through so it gives you some idea as to uh, how this actually works. So the guides are there to ensure that the tape follows a, a nominal correct path. But I'll show you a detail of the optical sensor a bit later. But as you can see, the LED flickering is the sprocket hole LED. The actual data holes uh, feed straight out through the cable so you can't actually see anything on on here that would uh, show you those are working but I can assure you they all work as they should do and what you can see is while this device is very similar in appearance it's much easier in terms of setting it up because the sensor is a bit more sensitive than the original and in fact the kit comes with two options for setting the sensitivity of the sensor and that's so that you can uh, tailor it to your requirements and have a, a very pure original experience fiddling around with lights trying to get it to work or you can go for the second option and have a more sensitive reader that looks identical to the original but is a bit easier to uh, to set up and to use the other LEDs are for indication of the status of the handshaking. Now luckily the handbook for the original is still available online and I will put a link to that in the comments uh, below. 
Uh, I'll also put a link into the, the kit. Um, but as you can see, it is uh, fairly faithful in its appearance. So I'll give you a quick look at what's actually in the kit. Um, just get this out of the way first. So the kit comes complete. It doesn't come with a cable, but you can buy those separately. So you have all the electronic components, all the ICs, LEDs, resistors, etc. A set of preformed guide rails, so they're, they're bent on a jig to the exact dimensions, so they will fit straight into the board without any messing about. You'll just need to set the height, but that process is explained in the manual. There's a, uh, an enclosure, some bays for the bottom, um, obviously the PCB. So it's gold plated with a, a black mask to look as uh, authentic as possible. Uh, and of course there is a, a full set of instructions that go into quite some detail as to exactly how to uh, put this together along with any adjustments that are, are required for setting the, the guide rails uh, and then how to operate it. But um, far more information on the operation is available in the original manual um, and as I said I will put a link to that in the description of the video. I mentioned earlier that we'd have a quick look at the sensor because it is key to the operation of this device. And, and this is it, it's um, custom machined housing and the sensor is designed specifically to have the, um, the response in terms of wavelength and sensitivity that is required to work in the environment that it's likely to be used in. Also note that it has uh, guide rails or guide cheeks at either side. I must grab the paper tape. And, and the purpose of those are to ensure that all of the guide rails will get the, the tape into the area of the reader, uh, sorry, of the reader head. Uh, the cheeks ensure that even if there is a slight skew in the tape, it will always be right on center with the sensors. And that's to make sure that there aren't any issues in the sensitivity changing if the angle of your light changes for example and this makes the whole thing far easier to use uh, and that can be quite uh, an important thing if you're trying to load 4k basic into an altair for example you don't want to get halfway through and have the thing just just stop on you okay so that's it um as i said i'll put a link into the kit if you have any questions then please put those in the comments and also if you have any ideas for vintage boards or equipment that you would like me to have a look at reproducing then again put those in the comments as well